Hey guys, it's Kathy. Apparently I can't stay away. So <laughs> here I am. I was actually going to take today off, but I decided that I really wanted to come on here and just chat and color because I've really become accustomed to this and I'm really enjoying doing it. So why not? Right? So today we're going to color this page. This is a page that I don't even think I've put in a coloring book yet. Um, I really like this page. I like that it's simple, but you can get detailed if you want. I like that some of the lines are thick and some of them are thin. So the thicker lines are forgiving if you want to color um, a... Um, they're forgiving if you want to color within them and color something thicker or color with an opaque pen. And then the thinner lines in the back are forgiving because you don't, you know, it's, you don't have to color inside the lines. You can just sort of do whatever you want. And as you see, you're going to see today, I'm going to do whatever the heck I want. So anyway, yay, right? Yay for doing whatever we want when we're coloring. So um, I have music on in the background for the first time today. Um, I have a subscription to a online music service um, called Epidemic Sound. And I just want to shout them out because when I make videos, I really like to have music that it's not hard to find something that I really, really like. <laughs> you know, like it's, I like to... I like to be able to, you know, add things to my playlist as I like them and just like be able when I'm when I'm editing a video, I like to just be able to go in, grab something that I know I already know that I like and just pop it in. I like to um, find a music service that or one place where I can find whatever I like, like I can find so much stuff that I like there that it's, I would just listen to it on my own. You know what I mean? Just while I'm hanging out and doing artwork or doing work, you know, as like background music. And that's what I put on today. I haven't had background music on yet, but today that's what I'm doing. So we're going to see if it's distracting to me or if it's, or if it's nice. I'm not really sure yet. We'll see. So um, this paper is just um, cardstock from Staples. I printed this out. This is a um, just a digital printout onto just a regular piece of cardstock. And I don't have this page up on my free coloring pages, but I have a ton of free coloring pages on my website. Um, if you go to bit.ly slash courageous pages, um, that's a full page of free coloring pages that I have illustrated for you. And then if you go to, while you're on that site, if you go to the resources page, you will find um, a page full of other artists that I know or that I've asked for their permission to put their pages up. And so you can discover new artists that way. And the cool thing too is that um, everybody has a different style. So you'll get to enjoy coloring lots of different styles of artwork so that's fun so i've been doing this method for the past week um i'm calling it tie-dye and i'll show you some examples of it that i've done this week so here's some examples so it's the method is i take the marabou art crayon and the Faber-Castell Gelato. These are soft, uh, water-soluble pastels, and I've been using these to, uh, I just draw some down, and then I press them into the paper, and I come up with this really cool tie-dye looking effect. And I think you could do so many cool things with this. Like here's a style I did where I did this sort of backlit from within. So anytime you want to show Anytime you want to show, um, you know, a uh, dimension, you can add like, a, you can avoid an area and have lightness there and then do darker around it and smudge it in real nice. And then you get a really nice dimensional quality. 
it's just really fun to use and I think I've only scratched the surface so that's cool and then I did this one yesterday I did this one I think oh no 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 this one was the day before yesterday this one was yesterday and oh also I just wanted to bring up that I have switched the camera to vertical today because I thought that maybe it would be easier for people to see. I think, and I know that I do this, I watch a lot of video on my phone and YouTube vertical on my phone is a very good user experience. And so, and if you're on your desktop, you can just sort of make stuff bigger. So I thought that, um, I thought that I would support, you know, just being able to see the screen bigger. And I think that doing this does support that. So I'm just going to work my way through this entire page doing what I'm doing. And I like using these blues and greens. I, I don't know what a warm color would turn the background probably green. Let's give that a shot just because we're all about experimentation here. So I started doing, I started doing these um, lives when I was on, um, I started doing them on Instagram. And Instagram, I love. Uh, Instagram is like, it's like a home to me. <laughs> it really is, but it was really flaky. So I decided to take my lives to YouTube and I've had, um, I've, I haven't really, because my YouTube channel, let me put it this way, because my YouTube channel is mostly, I mean, art does fit into it, obviously. I'm an artist, that's what I do. But um, what I have been doing on my YouTube is support for artists in terms of, you know, print on demand and business support type stuff. And there's some art, Definitely, but it seems to me, <laughs> it seems to me that the content that I post on YouTube that is based on um, business stuff and helping you to, helping you do things easier in terms of, um, you know, social media or your Etsy shop and stuff like that. That's the more popular content on my site, aside from like some art art supply reviews. So, so um, you know, that's sort of the content that I tend to do more of because I know that that's what more of my subscribers have shown interest in learning about and getting tips about. However, <laughs> However, I'm an artist and uh, I also love to do art stuff with you. I love to show my process. I love to talk about art. I'm an art geek and so are you. So that's, you know, that's my life. And, and you know, whoever watches this, you know. Even if, you know, even if just a few people, that's okay. I'm having fun and, you know, and hopefully you are too. And hopefully you're getting something out of this and learning a new technique that maybe you didn't, maybe you didn't know. Maybe you never learned about these materials or have seen them in the store. Maybe you didn't know about them. The cool thing about Marabou supplies. Okay, let's talk. Let's talk price here. So I have seen, when I actually purchased these, uh, I purchased them at, I purchased them at the Artist and Craftsman store, which is, <clears throat> I have actually two art stores that are five minutes from me. One of them is Blick Art Materials. The other one is, the other one is um, Artist and Craftsman. And I love them both for different reasons, but I tend to favor artists and craftsmen 
because real life, like the stuff that they have there, they're sort of more up my alley in terms of what I look for when I'm purchasing in an art store. So um, they have a lot of materials that I like. They have a large pen selection. They have a lot of drawing stuff. They have a lot of brushes and um, brushes at good prices. They actually have a whole area of really inexpensive um, brushes like seconds and stuff. And I just love to dig through there. And um, so it's, it's a fun shopping experience. And I think an art store should be obviously have the stuff that you need. Um, they should have um, different price points. So people on different budgets and with different needs can shop accordingly and appropriately for their needs. And I think they need to inspire you. So what I wanna see is all of the above. And I really wanna see things that I didn't know I needed. <laughs> you know, like I wanna see new papers that maybe I never heard of or, you know, that I can't find other places or I wanna see ideas, you know, I wanna see, um, I want to see the new stuff. I want to see what's what is trending. What's cool that I've never thought to use before. Let me think of a good example. Okay, so um, and something I've never purchased, but I would like to, and I just never have, is those metallic, those metallic watercolors, and they're beautiful. They're um they're in the black. Oh, I forget the name. Um. Anyway, and they are all textured and everything. So. They're very, very beautiful paints. Um, I like the store that really keeps up with the trends and both both Blick and Artisan Craftsman do that. But, um, you know, it's, it's cool because some are geared towards other things. Like Blick, for instance, has a large, um, they have a large clientele of MIT students and, um, you know, technical art students, people who are architecture students and stuff like that. So they have a lot of that kind of stuff. And I think Artists and Craftsmen has it too, but they don't, it's not quite as um, obvious there. It's like less, I think they have a little bit, they have actually a bigger, they have a bigger footprint, so they have more space, but um, it's less front and center than it is at Blick, but, but I think Artists and Craftsman does a really good job of, you know, introducing new products and um, showing new trends and really sort of blowing it up. Like in um, my Artists and Craftsman, they have a full wall. Um, I mean, a full, um, what can I say? It's like a huge display of Molotow, one for all, one for all markers, these, and a huge display, like bigger than any I've seen. And um, just all inclusive, just like a good size display. And they also have one of Posca. So, and those are two very similar, similar products in terms of what's inside, but very much different as well because they, they have their differences for sure. And, um, you know, they're complementary, I think, because these are a lot less expensive. They're really good quality, but they um, don't have the sophistication of colors that these have. So, you know, they're both good. So um, just on this blue paper, the one cool thing is how you notice that um, colors react differently when they're on a colored, obviously, when they're on a colored background. Like these are all done on white paper and you know, you get the true color value. And then this is a drawing that I did, a coloring that I did on a green piece of paper. And this is what done with Neocolor crayons, Caran d'Ache. And you know, it's cool to see how different colors play on different 
different color materials play on different color paper. Just something to think about, something to keep in mind, and something to play around with. So on this page, I think I'm going to stay away from any pinks, oranges. I did do some yellow here, but it came out as green, which is cool. Um, I'm using a little white here because I'm going to smudge it in and see what happens. See what I get. So I'm getting a little bit of the yellow from my finger, but do you see how it sort of makes it look more dimensional? I love that dimensional quality that you can get. I'm very much into that in my artwork. So, so these are coloring pages that I illustrate and I started, I started doing coloring pages um, right around the time that I started, that I quarantined. I decided, I actually committed to myself to do a coloring page a day. Uh, Cause I, I do coloring books, but I don't actually color all that much. And I needed to um, do something that didn't have a, any kind of, um, I didn't, I wanted to do something that didn't have like a deadline attached or didn't have a, um, didn't have a motive attached just to sort of do art to for the sake of art because I think that can fall away from me sometimes and I think that can fall away from a lot of artists sometimes because we're you know thinking about the next project a lot and uh need to get out of our own heads sometimes and that's why I started coloring um more you know, I've always liked coloring, of course. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't have done coloring books, but or wouldn't do coloring books. But, um, you know, as something that I actually practice myself, like regularly practice. And what I've discovered so far, since I've been doing this for a few weeks now, is that it's a great way for me to really explore the materials that I own already and that maybe I don't use as much as I should or could. A lot of the work I do for um, product is done, most of it, okay, is done on my iPad or on my computer. Um, what I do is for like an art print, I would do, sometimes it's a mix of like a background that I've done analog which is what I'm, you're, you're seeing right now I'm just going to call this analog and then scanning it in and then and then um, adding it to a piece of digital art or doing an entire analog piece of artwork and then scanning it and making an art print but um, but just like really digging in and exploring the materials on paper. Um, unless it, it feels like I just don't do that. <laughs> unless I set a project for myself and projects are really important. I mean, I, I don't do them all the time because obviously they require a commitment and sometimes you're, you know, you have other commitments and you just don't have the time and the energy for it. But I think you know, one of my jobs and one of our jobs as artists is to make the time for it. And um, that's a lesson that you constantly sort of have to impress upon yourself sometimes because it's not going to draw by itself. You know, <laughs> like you're not going to, the art's not going to make itself. You know what I'm saying? So uh, we need to stay on top of, you know, stay on top of, uh, doing our creative work and really, you know, practicing it on the regular and making those mistakes. And the cool thing is, because you know, most of it is mistakes, right? And the cool thing is coloring really gives you that leeway without self-judgment. And that's a big thing for me because I think that a lot of artists or would-be artists 
get very caught up in the self-judgment part and in the perfection part of art. And I think in a lot of ways, it's like that's in some ways, that's what sets apart people who end up doing it really like doing it regularly from people who don't is the self-judgment factor. And, and also people that end up doing like better at it, like going farther with their art is because, you know, they pick themselves up, they brush themselves off and they go on. Whereas, you know, some people like will just self judge and stop doing it. And that's not what you want to do. You want to just plow through, make your mistakes, you know, embrace the ugly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I have a uh, blog post that I did years ago on my website, kathyweller.com, and it's called Why Ugly Sketches Matter. And it's all about that, um, why ugly sketches matter and why ugly art matters for that matter. So, um, so go make some ugly art. Go make some ugly colorings. You know, just who cares? Just do it. You don't even ever have to look at it again. Just do it. Plow through it. And I feel like when you hit a wall, when you hit a wall and you feel like, oh, you made a mistake. Oh my gosh, you can't go on any further. I made this mistake. It's terrible. I can't fix this. Try and fix it. Look at that. And that's because art is just one big... Art is just, it's just like one big challenge that that is, you're constantly going to be making marks, looking at things a different way, and then saying, okay, how can I balance this out? How can I fix this? You know, how can I, um, you're going to do something and then you're going to say, okay, now I need to <laughs> fix this problem, you know? So it's, that's what it's all about. You're just constantly going to be balancing your composition and your decisions that you make and fixing things you know it's all about <laughs> it's kind of all about this self dialogue the self inner dialogue and fixing things where um fixing things that you feel like oh i made a mistake you know how can i fix this now that's what it's all about so it's kind of like that's a really good practice to get into, to just step into that and just uh, work on that part, you know, just work on fixing it, work on them, um, or not even, just like embrace it is all I'm saying. So uh, now that we have a good background on this, this is just like a blue, this is just a blue cardstock from Staples. Staples office store. If you're in a different part of the country that doesn't have a Staples, it's any office office supply store. And this is a printout of a coloring page that I did on it on a laser printer. The ink is fine. It's not smudging at all on just cardstock from Staples. So you can go into Staples or get it online. Any office supply store, grab some cardstock, colored cardstock to do this project, and uh, or whatever you have at home. What I really like to use is um, craft paper. Craft paper is so awesome to uh, oh, excuse me to color on. I love it so much. Um, so we're gonna be using. Actually, I have these two, and these are so awesome. I love them, and. And the one, my, my concern about these is I really don't know how permanent they are. They're Bistro Chalk Markers by Marvi, by uh, Marvi Uchida, Uchida of America Corp. So you can get these on um, Amazon or any art store, really. Um, any commercial art store has these. I love these pens. They do get cloggy quite a bit, but the tip is large and they are easily, you can wash out the tips in, um, water. Uh, I have a tutorial on how to clean your chalk pens, chalk markers uh, on my channel. So super easy. You can clean these that way and you can also clean the Poscas that way and you can also you can clean mol Molotovs the same way. These are all water-based and it works for all of them. So the, that tutorial, although I have two tutorials, but anyway. So I think this color might be kind of cool. Let's check on the back and see how it reacts. 
So do we even see that? Do we even see that? I don't think so. It's slightly, it's slightly cooler, but it's not showing up enough. So I don't, although it might show up cool. Let's see. Nah, I don't think so. I don't think I'm going to use that one. I think we might be doing white, but I actually, I didn't use that much of these today. I feel like I usually use more. Um, I feel like I usually use more on the paper um, than I have been doing in the past. And also this coffee paper is thinner. So it's, I think that this surface might still be a little bit toothy enough to handle, let's just try it, the Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2, which is, you know, one of my favorite things ever. And I talk about them every single video, which really must stop because, come on now. Come on now. I talk about them too much, but I love them so much. Um, I'm just going to grab some of the lighter colors and you can see how I'm going to work these in. Um, I'm just grabbing some colors that I think marry well with our palette here and also that are going to pop a little bit. Uh, let's see. Let's try a yellow too. And, oh, I have this nice chartreuse color. It's called Chinese Green, but um, I think it's going to be too transparent, but we're going to try it anyway. And I think a couple of these are actually, I have two that are the same. And then I have this one, which I bought a big, big package of these, um, of the Caran d'Ache Neo Color from um, an Amazon from Amazon, from a seller. I don't know if it was from Karen Dash or a third party, but they had, it was like a 42 set, I think. And then they had these um, free with your order. They gave you some fluorescents, which are not available to purchase. At least I have not been able to find them available to purchase. And I was so excited to get them. And I have a pink one in here too. So I just want to show it to you because if, you ever purchase a set of the Caran d'Ache, here it is, of the Caran d'Ache, there it's, this is amazing. I'm going to actually show you what it looks like. I want to see, I got a yellow one too. So I got a green, I got a green, a pink, and a yellow. And they're not super opaque, but they're really, really cool. Um, I want to see if I can find the yellow in here before I just go for it and show you the, you know, I can't find it, but that's okay. So if I take this page and I just flip it, we're going to be able to test out some of these colors and see how they react on this colored paper. So that looks nice. And this is that Chinese green I was telling you about. This is a blue. It's slightly lighter than the page to my eye, but let's see how it looks. Okay, so this one's out because it's fading right into the paper. I can barely even see it at all. So goodbye. But actually, I found this really cool gray that might actually work. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, this is light cobalt blue. So um, it actually looks, it's kind of in between gray and blue. It's like a very cool gray, but it's clean. It's not like a, it's not like a dirty, muddy gray. It's very clear and clean and opaque and it looks great on this paper and then this one's really good too which we're going to try in a minute this is lime green which has the same properties it's very opaque it's it's very cool and it's a line it's a green so that looks good and then this is an in-between gray this is like a neutral gray and it's light gray and it looks good but I feel like I don't feel like I need it I feel like this one will serve the purpose for that one, but let's just keep it in the mix for now. Um, okay, so now I'll just show you the, the, so that's beautiful, but look at it against, look at it against this, look at it against this blue. So totally psychedelic, right? So there's little bits where it's built up and it looks very opaque. And then the rest of it is just sort of purpley magenta, which is really pretty. But let me show you what that looks like on just a regular piece of paper. So there's, this is the 
This is the fluorescent pink, and you get it in a Caran d'Ache Neo Color set on Amazon. It's like a freebie. And this is what it looks like if you're doing it over another color. This is a Neo Color 2. That's how it looks over a Neo Color 2, which is the water soluble one. And then I'll bring I'll put this up to the um, camera in a minute. And this is a Neo Color 1, which is the non-water soluble one, and this is what it looks like over that. So this is a this is not water soluble, so you can see it's more waxy. So if I'm putting this up to the screen here, so this one was done on a Neo Color 2. So you see how it builds up there. And then this one was done on a Neo Color 1. And you see how it builds up there. They look almost identical, but um, I think you get a little bit more of an opacity on the one over the one because the one is not water soluble, so it's not squishy. So anyway, that's cool. That's a cool one. And we have the white, which is here, and that is a, a goodie. I'm going to keep that. I unfortunately don't have a Neo Color 2 and white. I only have a 1. And then here's a really cool green color. Let's see if that works. That's kind of a good green. So here's so far what we have to work with. And one thing I've really been wanting to try, and maybe I'm just gonna switch gears and do this today, is I've been wanting to use my Zig Cartoonist ink over one of these tie-dye art pages. I might, I might give that a shot today. I generally don't want to like, I don't generally want to use like liquid media on this because I don't I just don't want to get into that because one of the things that I like about I just don't think the paper is going to hold up but also I also like the limitations that this sets on me um, it makes it so you have to sort of focus on dry media but obviously paint pens aren't completely dry but I think that I think that um that amount of of wetness is okay it's not a lot and you can just wipe that off but in terms of painting i think i might have to be a little bit more careful so i'm just going to fill in the letters with these crayons and i think i actually just grabbed this one and didn't even put it in our palette but let's just do this quickly here um this is the same one yeah It actually doesn't, jade green? Yes, jade green. Yes, jade green, okay, same one. And then this is a little bit of a darker jade green. So that's good. And then this is a blue, which kind of looks cool, but I think that I prefer, I might prefer it without that. So this one got removed and this one's getting removed. Okay, good. So let's stick with the more warmer tones, and then we have one medium, sort of a neutral gray in there. So I'm just going to continue with coloring these letters in. And I'm going to try and, um, it's three, I've been here for 33 minutes, I'm going to try and keep this to an hour. So, keep this to an hour. So, um... So it's a little bit more manageable time-wise, but I really enjoy sort of like exploring these different ways to experiment with my materials with you. And I hope that you enjoy it too. So now I'm just sort of doing gradations in the letters. So one thing you can do with these Neo colors, because when you press, it's like a crayon, like it's going to dig into the paper fibers. And one thing you can do, if you would like to sort of give yourself a little bit of leeway for down the road in your, in your art, is you don't have to press so hard where you might do gradation, right? So this is kind of the same principle as with color pencils. 
you can sort of give yourself a little bit of leeway. So I didn't press hard down there, so I'm gonna add, let's try white and see what we can do here. So when I'm done with, there we go, see? So when I'm done with the using the crayons, I'm actually going to go in at the very end with some Posca pen. And I'll show you how I like to use that. So let me know, because I'm new at doing the YouTube live streams. I had been live streaming on Instagram, doing um, coloring lives for about a week. And then it just kept eating my lives and um i don't want to lose that content <laughs> it just wasn't built for what i wanted to use it for and so i decided to move it to youtube and i already have a youtube channel and i have an audience here and so i thought why not just move it here um you know and again everything is an experiment so I'm just sort of testing stuff out and seeing how I go. Um, these lives have been really helping me to feel connected and I hope that they've been helping you too. I felt like, I feel like, and I think um, the world does, feels like we need to sort of forge new, new ways to connect to each other. And I feel like if you've already been doing video, like, good on you, <laughs> you know, like do more, do more of it. And um, I feel like I don't do it enough, even though I do have a lot of videos on my YouTube, but I tend to, I tend to fall out of, you know, doing videos and posting them as regularly as I would like to or should, or both, because, um, just because I live, I, you know, just because I'm a shut-in, and I'm like, I like to live in my little capsule sometimes, and that's comfortable, and that's not, you know, that's not always the best thing, quite honestly, you know? Oh, and another thing about these, they're smudgy, so you can, you can also use these to smudge, but these, the Marabou Art Crayons and the Faber-Castell are extra emollient, so they're very um, easy to smudge. And these are easy to smudge too, but they have more, um, there's more resistance. So, so the other ones are just easier to smudge. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like, the less resistance you have, the easier it is for you to do your work. Kind of like colored pencils are awesome, but they do take a lot of work to use sometimes depending on um, the person and their hand strength. Like some people probably just don't wanna use them at all because they require more effort in some ways than other coloring media than other art materials. And today's live, I actually, I actually did not, I didn't go and announce it from the rafters or anything. I've just been, you know, telling you guys that I'm gonna, that I'm gonna do lives um, mostly every day until um, I come up with a schedule that I think is maintainable on the regular for me and or until I just drop and I'm exhausted or both. So hopefully those two line up at the same time. I actually almost didn't do a live today just because I'm trying to save my voice a little bit because I'm going to record some class material and I have three hours worth of talking to do into a microphone. So I wanted to 
make sure that I still have some juice left for that. Um, I don't know that I'm going to do that today right now, but I'm going to see how I feel after this live. I wasn't sure how much I was actually going to talk today. So yesterday's live is not live right now. Like I didn't post it yet. I'm going to edit it a little bit and repost it because, um, because I'll tell you why. Because um, I really wasn't there yesterday as much as I should have been or wanted to be. I was just really tired. I have not been sleeping very well, <laughs> as a lot of us probably haven't been sleeping very well. And if I'm not sleeping well, I'm not super talkative. I'm going to actually have some water right now. So um, the talking quotient went down considerably and personally, I'm always thinking about, um, my thought is if I'm not really talking, then I could A, do a voiceover and share some useful information with you while you're watching and do like a speed, like turn pump it up, pump up the um, speed and do something like that. Or I could just edit out the quiet parts. Because I don't like to waste people's time, honestly. It's kind of like a thing. <laughs> it's kind of a thing that's on my mind when I do, you know, that's partially why my, my videos are so tightly edited. My non live stream videos, because I don't like to waste your time, but like right now I'm quiet. So I'm just working these down. I'm going to embellish the letters with Tosca pen when I'm done with this. Um, Feel like I need to tie I need to balance the yellow a little bit more so again this is um, what I was talking about about you know for every action you do it's like you're constantly reassessing you know the balance of your art and I really love coloring as color therapy for everybody for everybody whether you consider yourself an artist or you don't because it's like you're exercising a different muscle um, and everybody has it, <laughs> okay? We all have eyeballs and we all have a brain and we all have a left side of the brain and a right side of the brain. So, you know what I'm saying? So if you're gonna say, I'm not creative, I'm gonna say, do you have two sides of your brain? Do you have a left side of your brain and a right side of your brain, right? then you can't tell me that you're not creative. And, you know, it's in there, you know? And why, why do you, where did you come up with that belief? Where did you, what, what gives you that thought that you're not creative? Where does that come from? Who told you that and that you believed it, you know? So, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. So maybe I'll do the same thing with this one about editing it. I'm not sure. Anyway, is this too meta that I'm discussing the live stream as I'm live streaming? I mean, come on. So <clears throat> let's see here. And maybe next time I will move the camera down a little bit if I'm doing this vertical. So a lot of what I'm doing is an experiment because I haven't done a YouTube live stream until today with the um, vertical screen. So that's new for me. And um, that's a new thing. And I, I'm kind of digging it because, I mean, first of all, it works better for what I'm doing. You can see more of the art. And I feel like even if you're watching it on your desktop, it's, um, first of all, the quality is still going to be good. 
I mean, it's still going to be better than 720p. I believe it's going to still be 1080p. I'm not really sure, but I think it's going to be the same HD. So that's good. That's important. Um, when I was doing these on Instagram Live, and then I would save with them, and what the ones that actually did save would save as 720p. They would not save any higher than that. And um, I get it, you know, and that's not terrible, but I would prefer to have a higher quality since I'm doing art and I want you guys to be able to see the detail and stuff. So, you know. So I'm totally falling off on telling you stuff. My name is Kathy Weller Art on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Please follow me there. And you can get free coloring pages at CourageousColoring.com, which is my website. It's, I make coloring books. It's my coloring book website. And here's one of my coloring books. Chronic Illness Crusader. And in the beginning of every book, I have a story of what has inspired me to do it because I am very much a person who is inspired by my own life and I'm driven by, you know, I'm driven by things that move me. So, not to sound hokey, but that is the truth. That is the truth, honestly. Um, so, the class that I'm going to do a voiceover of, or to do the audio of, is a class that I created about licensing your character brand. Um, now, it's made for independent artists. It's not like Disney or anything. So when I say character brand, here's what I'm talking about. Such as pushing. That's what I'm talking about when I say character brand. And so I did this class and <clears throat> the class site that was hosting it is now defunct. And it's three hours long, and it's all my content from my own experience in life. And I'm actually going to use this blue chalk marker over some of the darker blue because I kind of like how it's looking. So I just sort of decided to experiment and do that, and I like how it's coming, so I'm going to use it. And I actually also have a green, one of these green, one of these chalk markers in green. So I'm gonna also use it there. And so <clears throat> I, you know, have been passionate about doing that, about um, doing character brands. I've done a few of them and I've licensed them to uh, various manufacturers that have sold them in retail and have had several collections and have had um, you know several different products I've had books and stuff so I just really want to share with you how I've done that because I think there's it's kind of a real niche <laughs> because not a lot of people do that type of thing do like a humorous character brand and try to find you know licensing partners for it so I have done that and in this course I tell you how I did it and how you can use my uh, use my methods to do it for yourself and um, here I'll show you a few just while I'm here 
So doggy yoga, here's the book. They also had a line of products of doggy yoga products. I wrote all, I actually hand lettered all this, but published um, by a publisher and then kitty yoga, the counterpart. So here's kitty and doggy yoga. And then here's cats at work, which is um, a comic that I used to do on the daily, um, five days a week. I did it for about three years. And then I put it on a hiatus. So, but I've had several, um, I've had several collections with different manufacturers at retail um, for cats at work products. We've had calendars and we've had office products and uh, fun stuff, really. So, what do I have that's handy that I could show you? Uh, I didn't pull out my whole bunch today to show you because this is sort of off the cuff, but I just wanted to um, just wanted to show you that. So yeah, because so I'm going to be doing um, a new audio recording for that class material, and then I'm going to be putting it up. Um, for purchase so and I'm really excited to do that because I haven't done that <laughs> yet it's been um I've only sold it privately um you know over the past couple of years but I'm gonna put it up finally so anyone can buy it so and it will be reasonably priced because I want things to be accessible to people Especially right now, right? With everything going on, it's just like, oh my gosh. To that end, I have free coloring pages up at bit.ly slash courageous pages. You can download your free coloring pages there. And on that, if you once you get there, once you get there, once you get there, there's a resources page. Click on that and you will get a page of free coloring pages by lots of artists. So, and they've all given me permission to put their art there. So definitely check that out and discover new artists that way. Discover some great artists that you can download their coloring pages and then you can check out what else they have to offer. There's a lot of great artists on there. So definitely check it out. And if you'd like to see my coloring books, you can go to CourageousColoring.com and they are there for you. So you can check out all my coloring books there. And pretty soon I'm going to be offering um, like download bundles. And I have a Etsy shop where I sell. I'm more known for my mugs, actually, because I have more mugs. But um, I have other products there too. But I am going to put my coloring page downloads on Gumroad. So that is going to be linked through CourageousColoring.com. So this blue, again, is like, you really can only see, you can really only see it at different angles, close to the value of the paper. So I'm actually going to, let me see what I'm going to do here. I'm going to use the Posca now, and I'm just going to do some embellishment of these letters. So what I like to do with, um, with letters and sayings is I like to share the message of the saying in the design of the letters and in the design of the entire composition. So this is saying everything is an experiment. So 
what I want to do with these little marks that I'm making, these little patterns that I'm making in the letters, is I want to make them look like an experiment. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just do different designs in each letter to sort of drive home the overall message that everything is an experiment, including what we're doing right now. See if that works. Okay. So, yeah, that's what we're doing. And it's fun too that the art is the lettering is very block, simple, plain. So, it gives you room to play inside of it, which is nice. Because, you know, coloring. A coloring page can just be really whatever you want it to be. It can be a gateway to drawing and a gateway to other forms of, you know, creativity, like just making little patterns and exploring with multimedia. It can even be a gateway to painting. I mean, we are kind of painting a page with dry media. That is pretty much what we're doing. So if you look at it that way, you know, it's like you're creating art here. And, you know, you thought you were just coloring. And, um, you know, you're really exploring your own creativity a lot. So that's pretty awesome. So you'll notice it might be kind of far from the camera, but my tip of my marker, the tip is a little bit frayed. So you can buy additional tips on these. Um, they sell them. And if you can't get them from your local art store, you can buy them online as well. I know Molotow makes them. I do believe that Posca has them too. Although I can't say for sure because I've never purchased them from Posca. But I do think that if you buy like a size, like a size of one, it's pretty interchangeable with the other brands of similar marker. So if I purchased a Molotow tip that was three millimeter, or whatever, one, two, one, one point three mm. Um, I think it would be workable in this pen as well. So I've been doing a lot of like just monotone style gradients lately, and that's because I feel like this method works really well with that style. Um, with that method of choosing my palette. And so that's been working for me. And how's everybody doing getting groceries these days? So me and Matt have like various <laughs> grocery people, grocery, we have various groceries that we're ordering from. We're not leaving the house and it's very difficult to get an order of groceries these days. So we have one coming today, which I'm super excited about because honestly, things are getting a little low and it's really bringing home like what we use the most in the house and what I want to have extra of <laughs> always. So uh, I kind of think that, you know, this social distancing and quarantining is not going to be, I don't think it's going to just like go away. And I'm going to try and stay away from, you know, any further discussion on 
that right now. But I will say that I think it's culturally just a complete shift for us because, and us, I mean everybody. <laughs> I'm not just talking about me. Um, for everyone in terms of, you know, in, in terms of every aspect really, but also in terms of like getting things that you need in your house, you know, just like your daily, your daily things that you need, like your staple items and and from now on, I think we're going to be much more into uh, keeping a little little bit of stock at home as opposed to not. Um, I'm more of a person who, who likes to have stock in my house. Like, I'm always a person who has been like, okay, have extra TP and stuff like that because I do not drive and neither does Matt and we live in the city and I feel like... For me, it's like, well, if it's on sale and I'm at CVS and I'm five minutes from my house, like, just grab it, <laughs> you know, just get an extra and then I won't have to worry about it for another, you know, couple weeks or whatever, you know, like, I just like to have extra because I don't have a car to go to Costco and get, you know, a bunch of stuff at a time. And that's just my lifestyle. So I've been... I've been um, sort of breaking away a little bit from this because ever since we moved closer to like more in the city, I mean, we lived in the city before, but five years ago we moved like really city. So we live on a residential street, basically in the city and everything's like five minutes away, a really short walk. So, um, so it's super easy to just get whatever you need quickly and we've done that and so it's been easier to do that in the residence we're in now than the where we lived five years ago for many years so um so i think i'm gonna probably be going back to that and no i don't i'm not a proponent for um stockpiling like I don't have two fridges. I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not somebody who has a fridge in the basement, uh, like my mom did. And like a lot of people I know have like an extra fridge and that's fine, but I don't have that. We don't have a whole lot of room in our house. We live pretty simply in terms of, um, that. And I like it because I feel like the more simple you live, the less, you know, maintenance you have. And um, it's nice, like, sure, fine, it's nice to have stuff, but, you know, all that stuff requires maintenance. And I don't, you know, it boils down to, like, what's important to you in your life, you know? So, you know, I am i don't care about a lot of things that a lot of other people care about. <laughs> you know, like... I don't care about having a gigantic house and I don't care about, you know, having more. I don't care about having more. I don't care about having more than more than I comfortably, you know, need. So that's just my I appreciate a beautiful you know, I hate a beautiful large home, but sometimes I see a large home and I'm like, what are you gonna do with all that space? You know, like what what do you need all that space for? I mean, honestly, I'd like a bigger studio. I really would. But, you know, make do. Do I need it? And, you know, what's, what's important? And I think this is kind of messed up here, but that's okay. Like what I'm doing here, I don't really know. <laughs> with this R, I'm not really sure what's going on with this R. But I'm just sort of playing around, doing different things. I was going to make it dimensional and then I, uh, I went wrong. <laughs> I went wrong. I took a wrong turn down a dark alley with this R and here we are. So anyway, let's talk about music. Um, let's talk about specifically music for videos. So I use 
screen flow to edit my tutorial videos and my talking head videos and like the screencast videos and talking head videos. And um, in the past, I have had a subscription to a website called, um, they have music on there that we're listening to right now, actually, that I really enjoy. And that is so easy to just find something that works on your video. It's just so easy with Epidemic Sound because I like so much and it's so easy to find stuff that I like that I think works with my videos. And for me, it's important. Like having the music in a video is kind of an important thing. I, I don't want just, uh, I prefer, I should say. I prefer to have music that I enjoy and that I might actually listen to when I'm not making a video, like what I'm listening to right now. And it actually just works well with background music here, but um, or we'll find out because when I watch this replay, I, I will decide if he's live or not. I'm not sure that it's actually going to work or not. We'll see. This is the first time I've played, I've played background music. But um, so anyway, story time. Uh, so I recently updated my ScreenFlow app. Um, my ScreenFlow, you know software and materials for your videos like uh, b-roll and stuff like that and some audio some music so I I jumped on that because like for me if I can just have music that I like that's easy to get for background music like give it to me because I'll take it because I just in the past and I don't do this anymore really I don't spend that much time in my music anymore because it's a it's a dark, deep, dark black hole that you have a lot of time. I want it to be easy. I don't I don't want to be um, I don't want to be going down down a black hole with music because there's more important things for me to. Uh, I shouldn't say that there was more important things because that's why I do think that music is really important. But I don't want to spend a lot of time looking for it. So so I did purchase this additional usage for a year and it's great but nothing has lived up to epidemic sound which i used to use in my videos so i just resubscribed to it because i thought since i'm making more lives and i'm you know i will be making more videos too i think it might and i miss it I think that's really the bottom line. I miss it too because I think it's just nothing has really compared to Epidemic Sound. So we will see if I keep it. I'm on a free trial right now. I used to get it on the regular, but um, I guess enough time has passed that where I still have a, I still had an active account, but I wasn't subscribed to anything. So if you have an active account there, um, you can have an active account and choose music, but you don't necessarily have to have a package. Like, you don't necessarily have to be um, a subscriber in order to have a playlist and to listen to it. So that's kind of cool because then you can just see what you like and play around with it and listen to it for a while and see if you find that it's worthwhile for you. And, you know, that's pretty awesome. So they give you that. I think I'll do the, I think I'm going to do the border for, for kicks. So they allow you to do that, which is really good. Because then you can just sort of listen to it at home um, while you're working and see how you like it. Play around and can experiment, uh, create a playlist and see what you like and see if you're jiving with it before you before you go and subscribe to it. But also they have a free, um, they also have a free month. So definitely check it out. This is not sponsored. I'm just telling you about it because I really like it. Um, I just think it's really good. I think the music is quality. There's a huge variety and I can find stuff there that I really, really like, like that I just like, period. Not not for background music, but that I just like. 
to listen to. And I think, especially with the type of videos that some of the types of videos that I make, such as like speed draws and stuff, I think it's really nice um, to have music on there that the people would really, that will keep people watching, you know? Like music that is like, oh, this is cool, but I really like that music too. So I'm just gonna keep watching because that music's awesome. Um, you know, I really like, I like to listen to good music. Like if you're gonna have, if you're gonna have something that's gonna keep people watching, why not try and give them a really good experience that like you would enjoy that you know, on other levels, despite not just visual, you know? Cause so much, and there's so much music out there, but uh, you know, it's fun to have a good marrying of the visual and also having something really fun to listen to as well. Something that maybe you haven't heard elsewhere, you know, that's like a little different and unique and, you know, addictive maybe, <laughs> you know, like a little earworm. So I like that. So I'm gonna finish this border and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna go when I'm done, get off this live stream and then I'm gonna post the final to my Instagram and I will also, when I post this live stream live, I will put it on um, the cover as well. And I think, I think I might do with this live stream what I'm doing with yesterday's, which is I'm going to edit it a little bit and repost it. Like just edit it for, you know, edit out a couple pieces that are maybe quiet, <laughs> a little too quiet or a little boring or something. So this is it. Actually, I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. I want to just try a little bit, see what we can do a little bit here. Any more, any more. So tonight we are going to do a video call with friends. We did it. We did one on last Saturday night and it was so fun. We were on the phone for like four hours, which is kind of a long time, but it was a lot of fun. And um, now I've just been looking forward to it. So I'm looking forward to that. So I'm just gonna keep doing, uh, I'm gonna do a few more of these just to balance out that one, the one that I did over there on the entire page. Same color, I'm not gonna mix it up because then we're gonna get into, uh, I'm not looking to make this super more detailed. I just wanna, I just know, I just wanna balance out the first one that I did. So yeah, through all these live streams I've been doing, my voice is starting to get a little hoarse. So I think what I'm gonna do is, I think I'm gonna take a couple of days off from doing live streams because and also, I want to come up with a schedule, like an actual schedule, like maybe do this a couple of times a week. And I think that will be good because, and then I can sort of see from there, like, do I want to do more? Do I want to do less? That type of thing. Or not less. I don't think I want to do less than two times a week, but I might want to do more than two times a week. But um, I think that will give me time to actually do other videos and stuff too because I do have a few videos that I really want to edit and get up that I just haven't done and honestly the first month of this quarantine or I will say the first three weeks were mentally difficult um I think most people would agree <laughs> so I just especially the first like three weeks it was challenging to really think about much else 
like I just couldn't really I really couldn't get away from the news and you know the, the up to the minute stuff was just sort of really ruling my life which understandably so and yeah it should be because this is our world right but it was a little overwhelming and I had a very difficult time um, focusing on things I want to do, you know, like my print on demand class that I'm working on. I couldn't even, I couldn't think about anything like that. All I could do was, um, all I could do was, uh, the only types of content I was feeling like I could actually manage to do was art you know, to share, like stuff that I was going to share it was just art stuff because the other kind of content, the kind that I would write, the kind that I would, you know, research that stuff was just sort of like, no, not happening. I just couldn't even focus. So I am at a place now where I'm definitely, I'm really looking into, uh, looking forward to getting back into that stuff. You know, we're like phase two now, right? Or maybe even further. We're, we're in phase two, I think, of new life, you know, new normal type of stuff. And how does this work into your life? And what does this mean? And how are you going to pivot and all that? So, yeah. So I don't really... I don't really know that I'm loving what I'm doing right now here with this crayon here. I think I'm just going to do a little bit more. I'm not loving. See, this is just because everything is an experiment. I not I'm not super digging like the singling out one line at a time. Not so into that. So, I'm just going to mix it up a little bit here. Try and Try and involve different, try and break that up a little bit before I hang this up, which is over an hour now. So, yeah. All right. So, the last thing I'm going to do, let me mark that in stone that this is the last thing I'm going to do. So, you see, this color is like almost the same color of this paper. So, I'm using this as like in between. Like, I'm using this as a, um, I'm using this as a connector to the other colors because that's really what it's working well for here. It's giving me some, it's giving me some melty, mixy quality here that I'm mixing a darker color into the paper color so it's more of a softer, it's more of a softer gradient instead of. instead of a harsh, harsher. Not that really anything's not really harsh here, but it's just making it look softer. So I am going to go and I will be back probably, let's see, tomorrow's Sunday, then there's Monday and then there's Tuesday. Tuesday or Wednesday, I would say. And then I think by that time, I should have a schedule for myself as to what days I am going to plan to live stream, art live stream. And I think I want to do some other... Um, not just coloring, but like drawing too. So uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there, but I just wanted to let you know. So I hope that you guys have an awesome day and I will talk to you later. I hope that you stay creative and definitely this here. Courageous Pages, bit.ly slash Courageous Pages. And here's our final product for the day. Da 
Let's see. All right. Thanks, guys. I will talk to you later. Have an awesome day. And...